What things should you better avoid doing at all costs in the Philippines? Some habits that are quite common for us Westerners can be dangerous here in the Philippines and some could even cost you your life. Quick hello to those of you who are new here. I'm Götz, I've been living in the Philippines for over 10 years. With my channel I want to bring you closer to life in the Philippines and give you tips on what to watch out for if you want to go on vacation or even emigrate. But now let's go to the topic of this video. I'll start cautiously with the less dangerous things. Number 10. Sarcasm. You will notice it for yourself. Filipinos don't really grasp sarcasm. Well, a lot of people often struggle with it, but it's even more pronounced here in the Philippines. An everyday example might be when you arrive a bit early at the grocery store, which is still closed and you stand in line. Then a Filipino comes up and asks you, is this a line for the grocery? Even though there is no other store people are queuing up for. So you say, no, we're all going to do the conga line here. At which point the Filipino looks at you if you are an alien, because he doesn't get it. For such cases, when you realize it didn't quite land, remember the phrase joke lang, which roughly means it was a joke, my friend. So sarcasm or trying to be funny is quite challenging here in the Philippines. Number nine is never raise your voice, neither at home nor in public. Getting loud like shouting is a sign of disrespect. It hurts the feelings of others and even if they don't tell you or show it, you lose face through it. Remember, you are in Asia and losing face is one of the worst things that can happen here. Anyone who shouts and causes a scene, even if they're drunk, loses the respect of Filipinos. Even though it's often challenging, always try to stay calm. The best method in such moments is something you should train yourself to do. Instead of yelling, tape several deep breaths in and out. It calms you down immediately and you can react more calmly. Number 8. Don't generalize Filipinos or Filipino culture. Everyone will eventually hear that Filipinos have a crab mentality. This refers to the crab basket because it's said that crabs, when imprisoned in a basket, could easily escape by just crawling out. However, when one crab tries to climb out, it's pulled back down by the other crabs. So it's a behavior of if I can't have it, neither can you. If you want to quickly make all Filipinos turn against you, then it's by lumping them all together with typical stereotypes like Filipinos are lazy, Filipinos are dumb, Filipinos achieve nothing in life. Filipinos may remain quiet when you start saying such things initially, but they will quickly unite against you and then you will be in trouble. So don't get into the habit of making such generalizations in the first place. Number seven, never lend money. Yes, it's easier said than done, but it must be clearly stated, never lend money to a Filipino, not even to your wife. It's a natural law here in the Philippines, see previously mentioned point eight, borrowed money, you will almost never see it again. So only lend money if you don't need it yourself. How can you now protect yourself against this, you ask? If someone asks to borrow money, the best response is, I don't have any money right now, you know. I lent money to person X, cousin Z, weeks ago and he hasn't paid it back yet. If he returns the money to me, then I can lend you some, but at the moment I'm broke myself. To say no money in Filipino, by the way, you say wala quarta. And believe me, this works. Number six, never say yawa to a Filipino. It means devil or demon. Also, the term bugo is a serious insult. If you call someone Java, you're cursing them as a devil or demon. And bugo implies that they are stupid as brain dead. So never use these words toward Filipinos because you're deeply insulting them. And as a result, you could face health issues yourself. Number five, never insult or shame a Filipino in front of their family or other Filipinos. As mentioned before, we are in Asia and losing face is the worst thing that can happen. Of course, as a foreigner, you will step on someone's toes from time to time and Filipinos understand that recognizing unintentional comments as such. But if you deliberately embarrass or shame a Filipino, don't be surprised if misfortune befalls you later. In the provinces, you might get pelted with stones, which is a relatively mild reaction. But Filipinos can be hot headed. Think about the temperatures here. And every household has a bolo. That's the local machete. 
Number four, never discipline other people's children. Even though it's difficult, don't meddle in other people's family matters. Especially don't discipline other people's children. That can be taken very poorly, very quickly. And certainly you should never hit someone else's children, even though it's still common to do it in Filipino families. This also includes a very crucial point, stay away from minors, especially from unfamiliar children. Minors are highly protected by law and you can end up in jail very quickly if you're alone with unfamiliar children. Taking a street child to Jollibee for a meal, never do that. All it takes is for someone to find it suspicious and call the police. And you will end up in jail charged with associating with minors who are not your family members. Especially if you're a tourist and the locals don't know you, absolutely avoid being alone with children. It can end very badly. Number three, don't get drunk in public. As a foreigner, you should have respect for the Filipino population and culture because Filipinos treat you with respect and you don't want to lose that. One of the quickest ways to lose the respect of Filipinos is to get drunk in public and then act or talk foolishly. Do I really need to say more about this? I don't think so. Let's go to number two. Don't overstay your visa. Whether you're here as a tourist or even with a resident visa, you're just a tolerated alien. This means visas have a valid until date. It can be a defined date or it can simply be the enough is enough validity, even if your visa is eternal like my perpetual SRV visa. So don't spoil your relationship with immigration by constantly overstaying your tourist visa and then thinking it's just a minor issue with no need for apologies. Yes, a few days are never a big deal and even weeks or months are fine if for example you were ill and have the documentation to prove it. But if you believe you don't need to other with such things or even continue living here illegally after more than three years thinking it will be fine, you'll eventually attract attention and bam, enjoy your time in the immigration jail, where you sit for a few weeks or even months until they eventually kick you out, with a blacklist included, because they never want to see you here again. Coming to the number one, never mistake the kindness of Filipinos for weakness. There are people who think, oh, these little Filipinos can't do anything to me. People who take advantage of the warm-heartedness of Filipinos. But always remember, even the powerful Filipinos are modest and warm-hearted and you won't necessarily discern a powerful Filipino status in the crowd, especially in provincial areas. That's because they don't adorn themselves with gold chains and flaunt their wealth. But these individuals do have influence and special connections. They just don't flaunt it as you might expect from Hollywood movies. If you step on someone's toes here, you will pay for it. And that could even mean with your life. So treat Filipinos, especially those you don't know, with respect. And believe me, respect you showed once will unexpectedly pay off later in life when you find yourself in need. Well, then we are actually done, but wait, I have one more thing, a topic that is absolutely taboo for us foreigners in the Philippines. Politics and political agitations are legally prohibited for foreigners. An Australian nun found this out a few years ago when she actively participated in a political rally. Church visa and her status as a nun back and forth. Objections in court, none of it helped. She was deported and is now on the blacklist. The list of people who will never be allowed back into the country. That's why I won't really discuss political topics here on my channel. It's the fastest way to get deported and to end up on the blacklist. Especially when you are a public figure like I am now as a YouTuber. And being on the blacklist means never being able to come back here. So just to say it, I love it here and I want to stay here. And I almost forget one more thing. There's one more grave danger that even made it into Wikipedia. A danger that neither foreigners nor Filipinos themselves should engage here in the Philippines. The danger comes from karaoke. Yes, the national sport of the Philippines. So pay very close attention now, because if you love to sing karaoke, never sing My Way by Frank Sinatra. 12 murders in the years leading up to 2012 alone and that's when Wikipedia stopped counting. That was many years ago now and no one knows how many lives the song has claimed since then. 
And yes, I'm not kidding. That song has taken 12 lives until 2012. And unfortunately, Wikipedia doesn't provide newer numbers. But since 2007, the song is already banned here and karaoke machines don't even have it anymore listed. And if you don't believe me, just Google My Way Killings and remember what I said. See, your bartender is your friend. So as we are at the end of the video, a little like should be doable, right? After all, I might have just saved your life. Until the next video, I now say bye-bye from Cebu.